Guys, so welcome back to The Monitor. My name is Mark Bramawi. My co-host is Otis McClay. Our engineer is Todd Simmons. You can listen to us every week at this time in Houston on 90.1, at 89.5 in Galveston, at 90.3 on Goodrich in Goodrich and Livingston. You can also catch us, of course, online at kpft.org. Our first guest for this week's show is Shani Rigsby. Shani, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Nice to talk to you. It's good to have you on. For people who uh, missed the beginning of the show, uh, Shani is a singer-songwriter. She's had her work featured in all sorts of arenas, including uh, feature films like uh, the Academy Award-winning movie Crash. And she's done a lot of studio and uh, work on independent movies and TV shows. And she's also appeared on uh, several TV shows as well. Um, Shani, before we get to what's in the song and, and who's in it, um, you're originally from, from Arkansas, is that right? Correct, I am. I am. I grew up in in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So I- explain to me, because when when I started to listen to your work and, and watch videos online and stuff, I started to see an awful lot of very international influences that doesn't strike me as being very Arkansas. What interested you <laughs> in this international thread that connects a lot of different kinds of music together and the way you use it? Well, you're, you're correct in, in that I'm, I obviously didn't have a huge amount of international influence, musically speaking, um, growing up. But I moved to Los Angeles um, in my teen years, and I was opened up to just a, a world of cultural influences and musical influences in, in L.A. Um, and throughout that process, I, I began to kind of uh, immerse myself in, in various music scenes and started working with some well-known artists um, and just getting my feet wet in the beginning. And it really, it was a job for me. It was a paying job for me. But I began to really kind of fall in love with it, and uh, it began to influence my writing and my production style and performing, and um, and I was sort of forever changed. And and I've heard uh, one of your songs, the name escapes me right now, but you're singing in Spanish, and the music is very uh, Arabian and Persian influenced and instrumented. Correct. That's I think you're probably referring to one of the songs that uh, was was in Clash. Um, Yes, I mean having having a, a large Spanish-speaking population, obviously, uh, in in the you know Southern California area, that was also a given. So when I began kind of working on this this um, Eastern influence, kind of East meets West, if you will, um, I also knew there was a relationship there where a lot of Spanish-speaking people um, were kind of into that as well, and I began to dabble with a few things and. It, 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 it's always been very ex- experimental, but I've been thankful that it's, it's been embraced, you know, the idea of kind of fusion, fusing musical styles and, and things together, um, which is kind of a, a thing I guess I've come to, you know, be known for. And you've you've been uh, at this for quite a while now, and a, a lot of uh, references that I found in searching about your work is that you've been involved in charity work for quite a long time, and I, I guess this brings us to this song that you have uh, produced and, and that you sing on as well called We Hear Your Voice. Where did the idea of that project uh, originate from? Well, there were a couple of things. You know, first of all, I've, I've toured so much in my career. I've been all over the world, and I've always been sort of interested in the fact that, you know, we don't always know um, the artists that exist in different parts of the world and how wildly popular they can be. Um, and it's been it's been really inspiring and, and interesting for me, even as an artist, to discover other artists and their work. Um, some of these people have become good friends of mine through various collaborations or concerts we've done together. Um, but truly, the initial inspiration for We Hear Your Voice was I I've been watching kind of online uh, the technology becoming this this you know new way for people to connect from parts of the world that were you know considered enemies or, you know, um, there was this strong division if, if you were to just sort of see things on TV. And you'd see a lot of youth reaching out to each other and trying to get to know each other as opposed to just kind of going with the basic, you know, uh, potential propaganda that they might be shown and that there was another uh, another viewpoint from, from connecting to people directly. So that was really inspiring to me to see that people wanted to reach out and and also, you know, every time we have a natural disaster, I'm, I'm always, you know, impressed when, when we as Americans or even people in other parts of the world try to reach out and say, you know, we do hear you, we, we're here for you, we want to help you. And this is all because of technology now that we're able to do these things. So it was sort of a marriage of that and thinking how can we use music as this, you know, universal language that we have um, 
and using some of these kind of icons from different parts of the world as messengers, really to show this kind of solidarity. You, you mentioned that uh, people in this song come from you know countries that are quite often uh, you know juxtaposed as enemies. So the obvious examples, I guess, are Nasser Musa from Palestine and uh, Liel Khaled from Israel. Were there any yeah. any issues in in getting them uh, together, or any sort of uh, difficulties in, in getting you know Nasser out to do this this track, or, or what was the logistics of of getting? Because there's a lot of people, and it's like eleven or twelve people involved. There are, there are. You know, um, without without adding too much fuel, I, I there were additional uh, Arab artists that that I've worked with that are friends of mine and and other people that I I had kind of reached out to that I was just impressed with and wanted to get on board. And I have to say that they, um, I had I had definitely received some hesitation on their part, not so much because they themselves were afraid or didn't believe in the message, but they were concerned about safety issues. They were, you know, feeling that they might be admonished, that there might be some safety issues for their families. Um, and as sad as that was, it actually motivated me more to remind, you know, remind me how important this is and that it is just a peaceful kind of, you know, humanitarian statement. Um, we're trying to do things for the future generations, for children, and to this is this is a charitable project, really. And, and we we thought... We were in a great position as as artists to to reach out and say, you know, we're standing side by side through music, and we can find this common ground, you know. Um, but it wasn't something that everybody could do, and those that did, um, I'm so grateful, and I and I know they were brave, and I know that's what's in their heart, that's what they're about, and uh, they've kind of committed their lives to that. So, all the power to them. Yeah, I would. I would imagine that some of the uh, Arab artists maybe would have been concerned about uh, the perception of them in their home countries if they're working with an Israeli artist. That's certainly, one yes. of, one of the political things that would have come up. <clears throat> yes, absolutely, and and that you know that was indicated, and uh, you know I, for whatever reason, you know, it's families, it's it's governments, it's uh, public perception, and and uh, there's repercussions, I suppose. Um, so they they were you know concerned about that, and I had to respect their wishes. But um, at the same time, I also believe that the people that we did get are you know wonderful sort of torch carriers for for the message. So I'm I'm really really pleased with who we have. Well, it's it's a great sounding song, and I don't usually play a lot of music on this show, but I want <laughs> to play the song. Uh, I know you've probably heard it more times than you can remember at this point, and uh, I don't know how you feel about hearing your own work. Some people don't like it. Some people... Uh, over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> no, not going to sound as great to you over the phone cool. connection, but... Hold you know. the music. Um, so we, if you don't mind, uh, Shani, I'm going to play the song, and then when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about, more about some of the other people that are in it. There's, uh, there's a guy from Korea who's a very fascinating story. Uh, you've got people from Russia and India and Afghanistan and all sorts of other places, so... Uh, if you're okay with it, we're going to play the track. And there is a there's a link, as I said, on our website to uh, the YouTube video. People can go watch and, and see the people whose voices we're about to hear. Um, and when we come back, you can also tell us, you know, your the funds that are being raised from this song are going to go to to charity. So, kind of keep keep your head uh, switched on in that direction, and we'll talk about all that after we after we hear some music. Fantastic. All right, so here it is. Try to hold your truth to set you free. And when it feels too hard to just go on, find a place within you and be strong.
Well, there is, uh, there is more to that track. Uh, we cut it short by about a minute just because uh, the reality of a live show that's only an hour long, we had to do that. But, mm-hmm. uh, Shani, fantastic stuff. Thank um, you. What, uh, what can you tell us about the charity or charities that you're hoping to raise money for and how people can contribute to that? Well, we decided since this is such an uh, international you know, collaboration with all of these artists, um, it was important to, first of all, we all wanted to focus on, on children because this is about the youth and, and the future. So we decided to uh, choose international charities, which, you know, are, are strongly rated or, or are well-known, such as Save the Children, um, that has an international presence. And at the same time, we've picked um, a few local or specific uh, uh, places, if you will. I recently attended... Um, uh, an orphanage in Mexico, in Tecate, Mexico, and um, there are a few specific places like this where we will also give some direct funds to. Um, but we also think that by working with some of the larger organizations that this is such an ongoing movement that um, throughout, you know, the future when when funds are needed specifically in certain places, these organizations will know, you know, where, where the funds would be needed um, most, most. So that's not our business. That way, we, you know, we make sure that things are happening correctly and um, and where they're most needed. And and what's the easiest way for people to to donate or get involved? I assume they can download the song online, obviously, probably through iTunes. Are there Absolutely. Any, <clears throat> any other any other venues that they can get more information? And we have a link to your website already. My website has a link to We Hear Your Voice, where all the artist profiles are, and there's some behind the scenes clips and things. We're actually completing a documentary. We're, we'll be releasing a short-form document about the making of this. And uh, we had such a great footage of, of the recording process that we realized we really needed to do this because people such as yourself ask a lot of questions about how it was done, and that's the best way for us to show it and performing in front of a live audience and so on. But as far as how the public can be involved, it's you know, they can go to their favorite download site, whether it's iTunes or Amazon. It's, it's all over the world. It's available now all over the world. And uh, in the in the form of four or five minutes we have left, I wanted to just get to some of the more uh, unusual stories. There's one guy in particular who stood out for me who I'd actually seen on uh, Korea's Got Talent uh, probably sometime last year. I don't know how you know how old the performance was that he did on there. Um, yes. and I, I may say his name wrong, but this is Su- Sung Bong Choi. Correct. That's correct, yes. And so well, what, what is his story for people who don't know him, and how did you find him? Uh, I, probably like you. Uh, I saw him on the Internet, and I was researching um, something else, and I stumbled upon his story. Um, he was a young uh, child uh, orphan of about three years old. Um, he was orphaned in Korea, and he, after having a very abusive background, he uh, more or less escaped the orphanage he was in and raised himself on the streets um, in Korea from the time he was five. And it's, that in and of itself is just unbelievable. Um, but music got him through, and he loved music. He loved uh, classical music, and he would listen um, to singers. Uh, I guess he, he had access to a, a nightclub, and uh, he was able to listen, and that got him through. So he auditioned for Korea's Got Talent, and they told his story, and it's had something like up to now more than 100 million hits. Um, and he's singing this amazingly beautiful operatic piece. And um, I found him and said, we've got to have him. So I reached out, and and uh, and we got him, and he recorded uh, some of his stuff in Korea, and then we brought him to Los Angeles when we debuted the song um, to a live audience here for filming. And it was just, I couldn't believe it when we, when we actually brought him, you know, I had tears on, on, in my eyes on the stage. I looked over and couldn't believe this was the same guy that, you know, was a world away, um, that I'd seen on the internet. 
Well, I mean, his story alone is is uh, worth a show in itself. Uh, but there, <laughs> yes. are, there are so many other people uh, involved, um, and I I'm a, a firm believer in you know the power of of music. I, I know it, it affects me uh, on a very deep level, and I'm sure that a lot of the listeners will feel the same way. Uh, we have about a minute or so left. Any any closing thoughts you want to leave people with about uh, you know what you've got coming up next or what you hope this will lead to in the long run? I just hope that people will you know give it a thought that that all, what all of these great artists have done that they reached out and said you know it doesn't matter where we're from we we were hoping for a better world and we're proud of of you know where we're from what our culture is but we do live in one world and and what what happens affects all of us. And it's, you know, you can decide to just feel defeated or you can get up and try to make a difference. And that's what we all did. And everybody can do their part. You know, this is about the future and it's about future generations. So I would just inspire people to get involved, you know, and, and learn and, and try to connect however they can. Well, I, I do get the occasional email from people saying, you know, your show is just full of depressing bad news, and <laughs> I feel disgusted with the world after I get through an hour of this. I mean, it's important to know about, but it's so depressing. Uh, so hopefully this is a, a change of pace for, for listeners and uh, something that they can get involved in. The links to shinymusic.com and to the YouTube video are up on our website. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're into music, which I suspect a lot of you probably are, uh, you mm -hmm. can go download this, and you know the the money is going to a good cause, and uh, there's a lot of very interesting international people involved. Thank you, Mark. I I really appreciate your your doing this, and and hopefully it will uplift people and give them that little that little glimmer of hope that we all need. Yeah, and I, I want you to to follow up with me as things uh, develop with the documentary because I'd love to watch it when it's finished. Most definitely, you got it. I appreciate it. I sure will. All right, great. Thanks so much. That was uh, Shani Rigsby or Shaney, I should say Rigsby. Singer-songwriter, her website, uh, shanymusic.com. Uh, as I said, there's a link to the YouTube video on our website. Uh, you can do a quick search for We Hear Your Voice to find it.